I'm David from Lavica Photography, and today I bought the OMD EM1 Mark II, but that's not what we're talking about today. The problem with this is it's a 4K camera, which I'm not really a hardcore video guy, but it does do excellent 4K video. And so I'm excited to use it, but it has one problem. The flip out screen, while perfect for hand holding 4K and doing selfie stuff, uh, all your ports for your microphone, headphone, HDMI are all on the side. So they pretty much go right in front of the screen when this thing is on. So that brings me to another monitor. So this is what I ended up getting. The Best View S7 uh, 4K HDMI monitor. And uh, you know, this is just slightly better than the Feel World that we reviewed uh, a couple of months ago. Almost double the resolution, which is really good. But anyway, let's go ahead and open this thing up. First off, I just want to compliment on the box. The box is a really nice box. Nice silk screening. It's actually raised. It's called a uh, aqueous kind of overlay. Very nice graphic design. Ooh. So anyway, let's go ahead and open this up. And oh, look at that. It's foam. This is really nice foam. Megan, look at this foam. That's so, oh, feel it. That's really nice foam. We could make a bed for your hamster out of this foam. We totally could. Anyway, I'm going to save that foam for you because someday you're going to want that. It comes with a manual. And let's have a quick look at the manual. Ooh, it comes with a, uh, a warranty card and a, uh, um, a uh, posted invoice uh, special warranty stamp. I don't know what the hell that means. So anyway, it, uh, the monitor... Um, manual comes in two different versions. It comes in the impossible to read Chinese version because I don't read or speak any Chinese. And then it comes in the uh, English version and it's very short and sweet and to be honest with you I didn't read it. So anyway, <clears throat> let's go into this stuff. Silica packets. Love silica packets. I save all of these. I don't know why, but someday I think I'm going to make like a little sand garden with a little rake out of all my silica packets. No. Okay, it comes with a power supply, which is a very standard looking power supply that you see with a bunch of other stuff. So you can plug this into direct power, which is good. It comes with a little cleaning cloth to keep it clean, and believe me, you need to keep it clean. A nice velvet bag. Actually, the bag is really very nice. And it's also lined on the inside. I mean, this is a very... I mean, look at that. The bag is probably nice, the nicest thing in the box. Besides the monitor, of course. But And then we have the monitor. The monitor itself uh, has standard menu button, menu navigation, F1, F2, and F3 for fast functions, and a source button, power button, and then it has your horizontal uh, tripod mount, quarter 20, a vertical if you want to go vertical for some reason, and then a, kind of a weird USB connector in the back, and then on the bottom here we've got HDMI in, HDMI out, headphones, the DC in for the power cord that I just showed you, an AV in and AV out, which I will probably never use, and then the battery plate. So the battery plate is actually really cool. It comes with two different versions. So Canon E6 batteries on this one and Sony uh, NPF batteries on this one. And that's what we're going to use. And in this case, I have a huge... Uh, these are the ones that I use. These are the extended length batteries. And these seem to work just fine on here. Hot shoe mount for the monitor. And then this Allen wrench and a bolt. The bolt goes... I'm guessing, because I actually haven't looked in the manual, but the bolt probably goes in here if you've got something that you need to screw it into and uh, you need a bolt sticking out of there. So I imagine that's what it's for. Okay, so we, we got that on there. Now back to the box here. So we've got this really nice sunshade, velvet lined on the inside. Ooh, so soft. And obviously that's to block reflection. And then we've got 
this uh, mount for the sunshade. So this thing goes on the monitor this way. And then this, I discovered, the easiest way to get this on there is to put it folded up, stick it in there that way, and then down like that. The other thing this thing comes with is an HDMI to HDMI cable. Now, this is a small HDMI on this end, but it's not mini HDMI. For this camera, I need mini HDMI, so I just happen to have one of those cables here. This one did not come with the correct cable, so I will put a link for a cable for this one if you guys need it in the description. Now let's go ahead and turn the whole thing on. So there's a switch on the back, as I said before, for the battery. This is one thing that the Field World monitor didn't have. All right, let's power this thing up here. Now, this is what I'm getting when I first turn it on. So here's your buttons. You have menu, and then the navigation for the menu, and then F1, F2, and F3. Just to show you what F1 does is that's our histogram. So it's right here in the corner. And you can see it moving around when I move my hand over the lens. So it has its own histogram if you don't want to use the camera histogram. Now, we can turn that off just by hitting F1. F2 brings up our volume bar over here to see if we're peeking out when we're recording. And we can also turn that off if we don't want to see it. F3 mutes the system. So right now it's muted, right now it's off. And then source allows you to go through the different sources on the back. But this is the problem. This thing doesn't fit. And this is what happened when I just turned this thing on. So if I go to menu, these are what we have. We have assistant and then we can go down to make. Now the first thing I want to do is go to image and image is where we need to be just to get this thing looking right. So we'll go over here to video ratio, which is fine. I don't have any complaints about that. So let me go down and then picks to picks. This is the one that we need to get this thing to fit. So now we need to turn this on and voila, our screen fits. So that just means pixel to pixel. And then we have a zoom function and flip horizontal, flip vertical and freeze. And we can also turn on noise reduction if you need it. So anyway, let's go back to, uh, let's go back over to menu. Menu brings you back by the way. And let's go up to the top and we'll just kind of bounce through this really quick. So the assistant here, if you go to monochrome, and you want to cycle through everything, then you can just cycle through. And we can go to grayscale, and then we can go to red, green, and blue. And I'm not sure why, but you have that option. And then if we go back to menu again, we can go down to false color. And just to give you a, an idea of what that looks like, this is false color, so it's kind of like cartoon mode. I don't know what the hell you'd use that for. And then you have peaking in the monitor, and let me go show you what that does. And so if we turn peaking on, it's, it's focus peaking, but it, it detects sharp contrast in the entire thing. Now, this kind of drives me a little crazy. I, you're better off using peaking in the camera, but if you have a camera that doesn't have focus peaking, then you might want to use it. So in this case, we could turn it to high and then hit menu and then back out of the thing and then it turns it on and you see how everything now is outlined in red. But it helps us because if we actually focus on stuff, you'll see what's in focus is on red. So let me go back to the menu and turn that off because that is really quite annoying. And there we go. Go back to menu. We can change the beat color and uh, we'll leave it on red, but I'm sure you can do, let's see what we can do here. Green, blue, red. So that works. And then you have zebra function. Zebra tells you what your blown out areas are. And then your histogram and volume bar and camera mode. So that's under image. And then you have your color settings where you can adjust your brightness, contrast, hue, saturation, sharpness, color temperature, etc., etc. And then here you can change your shortcuts to your function buttons. That way if you want to just uh, be able to hit stuff quickly, you can. 
So down right now is set up for peaking. So let's see how well that works. So we turned peaking on. Oh, did we actually turn peaking on? Peaking is off. Peaking is low, peaking is high. Okay, yeah, so that works. So let's turn it down. We can turn peaking off again. So very simple to use menu system. Now, just to give you guys an idea, I did not read the manual on this thing. This is just from jumping into it and figuring it out. And it's, it's very easy to use. I'm just surprised that it didn't have the cable that I needed for this camera. So anyway, the resolution of the monitor itself is very high. Almost double the resolution of our other monitor. And it looks really, really good. Very easy to see outside. And uh, I think it's going to work just fine. Now, the one benefit that I did tell you before was this right here. So you have a power button to turn the monitor off. That just kind of like puts it to sleep. But if you really want to turn it off and not drain the battery, then you have an off switch that actually kills the power from the battery to the monitor. And that's actually very important to have. Uh, that way you don't drain your batteries down. And that was the problem that I had with the other one, was that it seemed to drain the battery a little too quickly. The reason why I want to use this monitor, obviously, if you can see right here, is this. Once you have a cable in here, a microphone, and a headphone jack, you can't see this monitor. It's just, it's now disappeared. So, this will be my new thing for a while. And the cool thing about it is it can also be mounted horizontal, or vertical. Sorry, it's mounted horizontal now. But it does actually have a vertical mount if you want to go that way. So anyway, I hope you guys like this quick little review. Give me a thumbs up, leave a comment. Otherwise, we'll talk to you guys later. See ya.